Well, thank you so much, uh, Nick, for joining us. Um, we're, uh, we're pleased to have Nick joining us. He's uh, a motorcycle designer and um, very experienced uh, in the field of automotive design and, and, and motorcycle design. Um, and uh, we're just happy to have him today and, and learn more about his process. He's been doing some amazing work um, using Gravity Sketch uh, in his professional, professional work. And so um, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Um, well, just to introduce myself quickly, um, I'm the design community manager at Gravity Sketch, and so I get to talk to all of you out there that's doing amazing things with the tool and, uh, and talk to, to people like Nick as well and, um, and share uh, the stories of, of designers like Nick with the rest of the community um, to maybe, maybe inspire you all and, and, and see what's possible. So, um, Nick, I just want to start right off the bat. Could you just share um, a little bit about yourself and, and share a little bit about your, your background for everyone watching? Sure, sure. Um, well, basically, I'm British, but I live in Germany now. Um, I found my way to Munich back in 2006. I wouldn't really class myself as a designer really anymore. I'm more uh, clay modeling or modeling. So I'm working with designers. Um, and so, I mean, I, you're, you're correct in some senses. I did start my career. Yeah. Uh, as a designer, I actually started um, back in, in, in India and I started my career wow. at the Motor Company. Um, but after after three years there, I kind of realized that my passion was to actually, um, it was creating the models and not sort of sketching and, and that every day. And actually a friend of mine then suggested, oh, hey, why don't you go off and um, start contract, clay modeling contracting instead. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll give that a go. And Via a few stops uh, around the world, I ended up in, in Munich and started um, clay contracting in the mini studio uh, in Germany. And um, so, yeah, um, yeah, basically, I don't know what I don't know what else you want to know um, about me. Like, I'm a clay modeler, I work in motorcycles. I love all things two wheeled, and um, that's it. I've just discovered Gravity Sketch, and it's uh, it's changing my world. Well, that's awesome. And, and um, you know, clay modeling, I just always thought was so cool. I mean, I did the transportation design track in school and um, I think it's kind of funny. I think the clay modeling process was just kind of starting to uh, phase out, I think, actually, when I was in school, um, just because tools like Gravity Sketch and, and even Tilt Brush and, and some of these other tools were the students just were, were picking those up. Um, and you didn't have to heat up clay. You didn't have to have this big mess. And, um, and it, 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 to, to some, you know, in the industry, clay modelers, it seemed like it's, it's been a, maybe a, it could be a bittersweet kind of thing. Um, I mean, obviously clay modelers are definitely very much still used in the industry. It's not like it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, definitely clay modelers will, yeah. be, will be pushing back hard, probably on quite a few things I might say this evening, uh, about gravity sketch, but, uh, We'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to ask, uh, when did you make the connection that you wanted to design your own vehicles uh, yourself? Um, I kind of fell into it backwards, really. I was, um, I was, I finished doing my A-levels and I had to choose what I wanted to study at university. I'd always wanted to be a pilot like my father and my grandfather before him. Um, but it turns out my eyesight wasn't good enough. To, to actually get the medical to become a pilot. And so I had to very quickly make a decision what I wanted to study at university. And I kind of liked, I was doing maths, physics and art A-levels. And so I kind of put all that together and was like, I like drawing cars. Uh, well, not necessarily cars, I just like drawing and I like cars. And so I kind of decided, all right, I'm gonna go do transport design uh, at university. And so I went to Coventry University and um, yeah, it was basically, that was it. That was kind of like, I turned up on this course and there was, I was surrounded by people that had always wanted to be car designers. And I had, for about six weeks or six months, I'd wanted to be a car designer. And that was about it. And so, uh, yeah, it was kind of, um, I kind of just found my way into it, I guess. Um, well, I never found my way into car design. That was the thing that, I, that I'll tell you about in a bit. But um, I, yeah, I found motorcycles and that actually... Wow. It was, was a great pivot for me, um, and I found something I really love. 
Wow. And so that's when your interest in motorcycles began was, was during that journey. And, um, I mean, did you ride motorcycles a lot when you were young and, and was I had no, your... I was actually expressly forbidden from riding motorcycles. Wow. And yeah, my, my father bought me my first car. If I didn't ride a motorcycle <laughs> and didn't smoke, well, you know, they know that most of my teen years were spent smoking and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm passionately into motorcycles, but I don't smoke anymore. So, wow. um, you know, now, I mean, I might seem like a, a really super obvious question, but I mean, you ride motorcycles now then I'm assuming. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, fair amount, guess, well what, what, what actually happened was so in, in like the third year of university, uh, I kind of had to, um, well, I was losing my what passion I had for car design, and I was I wasn't on fire for it. And then two things happened. Uh, a good friend of mine took me out on his CBR four hundred RR, mm. which is this like little Japanese race rep uh, bike. And so then we were like two fully grown English Adelaide guys, whatever, on there. And oh, but I could not believe how fast this thing was and how exciting <laughs> it was. You know, rev to like 18,000 RPM, sounded incredible. And that was just phenomenal. And then second thing that happened, like in my mind, these happened basically in the same week. I'm sure it didn't happen like that, but uh, you know what memory is like. Yeah. Um, and then there's, there's there's an industry veteran, this guy, Glenn Kerr. Uh, he's, a, he's a motorcycle, a freelance motorcycle designer. And he came and gave a lecture at uh, Coventry University and that was it. I was like, wow. Yeah. I hadn't even really thought about motorcycle design. Yeah. And like, he really just opened my eyes to it. And then wow. actually, so I then stayed in touch with Glenn and he, he put me in touch with some people and he really kindly helped me get my first contact to my first job uh, in India. So uh, wow. yeah, I owe a lot to Glenn uh, and my, and Matt, in fact, so both of them. So yeah, those two things really changed, changed the course of my life. Wow, that's incredible. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I I remember riding on a, on a motorcycle for the first time as well. And I just, I mean, from that moment, I was like, I got to have one of these. Um, yeah, it really is. Yeah. I haven't, since, uh, since then, I haven't really quite got one. I mean, I have this electric bike in the back, but, yeah, um, sure. you know, I mean, it's, there's something about it. You know, the experience, the, the, the wind, you know, in your face going by you and just like, you know, there's a sense, there's a certain freedom that I, I think uh, that you, you oh my feel God. with it. It's everything about it. It's the, yeah. it's the user experience. It's the, the aesthetic of it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you only have to pull up to a traffic light. Right. And there's a, there's a five-year-old kid walking across the street with holding his mom's hand. What's the kid looking at? The kid is looking at the motorcycle. Right. He just can't take his eyes off it because it's just, it is that. It is that. I mean... Uh, there's just it's ta just tangibly exciting everything about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so true. So cool. So cool. Well, uh, you know, I want to ask you, um, you know, because obviously, you know, you've been using Gravity Sketch in your work um, or recently in your, in your, you have a history of clay modeling. Um, and so what brought you on to using, like what converted you to using Gravity Sketch, but what even was the process of discovering Gravity, Gravity Sketch and then basically putting the pieces together that I could use this, you know, you could use this for your, your actual professional work. Yeah. Um, again, there was, a, there was a pivotal moment there. And for me, there was, I was, um, I was working with uh, zero motorcycles out in California on what is the SRF um, model that yeah. they launched. Wow. And so I was working, so I, I work in clay and, and, you know, some clients have big budgets, some people, have smaller budgets and at zero, you know, they, they didn't have a uh, big budget, a big studio, uh, everything like that. And so, so, so we'd had to pick up, like figure out a kind of a novel workflow. Um, Interesting. And, you know, so we had, there was no CMMs for, or measuring plate or anything. And so I was using this, um, my Peel 2 scanner um, to scan the bike every so often. And then I was actually, the digital modeler took that scan one time and then split that scan up into um, different components, rendered those parts, and then dropped it over the um, over the latest engineering package. Wow! And then he set up uh, the uh, he had a HTC Vive, and he set that up. And then we, for the first time, I got to put a VR headset on 
and see the, the motorbike that I've been working on in clay for, for the last you know couple of months. Uh, and then I could see it in like fully rendered, beautiful color. I mean, it was just, wow. It, I mean, it was just absolutely uh, mind blowing. And I was, and I, and I really knew then I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, it's just, you know, every time I, every time I think about it, it makes my hair stand on end. <laughs> because it's so, it was just so, such an experience for me to see that and understand suddenly, whoa, this is the future. Really what I'm looking at is the future. Wow. And this is going to have a huge impact on what I'm doing. Um, and so then I started to really think about, okay, well, is there any VR modeling tools that are available? So, you know, okay, I, I could see that VR was great for presentation or appraising this, that, and the other. But yeah, I didn't really know that there was any um, VR modeling tools. Um, and so I just started looking around and then I, I became aware of Gravity Sketch. Um, I actually reached out to Gravity Sketch way back then, that was 2017. It didn't go anywhere. Um, that was partially my fault um, that, that that happened. Um, but really, the, it was it, it wouldn't have really been useful for me anyway until the sub D was launched at the mm. end of 2019, right? Yeah. And then and then even then, um, at the end of 2020, when the um, Oculus Quest 2 was launched, and suddenly I could get a, get an opportunity to play with this for like 300 euros. And yeah. so suddenly it was, it just opened the door to, to, for me to try this thing. Like I could see what other people were doing and I could see that, yeah, okay, maybe there was some opportunities there, but okay. I wasn't, I wasn't really ready to, to drop a, a, a few thousand euros on a, on a, on a, on a headset and all that stuff. So, um, wow. so yeah, so basically, um, was it how I figured out how to use it in my workflow was, wasn't until. I actually got on hold of it and then I could really um, have a play with it. And then, and then I was lucky again, because um, like the, the, it seems like the motorcycle design world or the motorcycle world is, is um, you know, separated by like maximum two degrees of separation. Right. And so um, <laughs> everyone seems to know everyone. And then yeah. a, so a guy I knew just uh, put me in touch. He was like, Oh, I know a guy in, in New York who's uh, developing this, uh, cool race bike and uh, you know he's like he's he's, he's this, this guy chris cosentino uh and he's developing this hyper mono bike and it's a it's a frame and uh, an engine based on a um, single cylinder from a, uh, the v-twin ducati panigale engine and so he's designing this whole thing himself wow so he needed some bodywork making um and so i kind of reached out to him and said well i i knew he liked my i knew he liked the work i'd done and so I reached out to him and said, well, you know, would you be interested in trying um, to design it in Gravity Sketch? Wow. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, whatever you want to do, basically. Wow. And uh, yeah, because I mean, he, there was no budget for clay or anything like that. So, um, so the client, yeah, we started to do it. The client then was uh, was the sort of the catalyst for using using a different tool in this case, which is interesting. It was, a, I, I had the tool and I was looking for a, I mean, I, I very much believe in learning by doing. Uh, and so, and if I had a real life project where I actually had some deliverable and some expectations on me, then I could really um, find the motivation to really um, use that tool in the best way possible uh, or figure out how, how best to use that tool. And so, yeah, so I started working on, on, on his project and, and then I found out that um, Brian Wisman, who uh, is a, He's a boss at Zero Motorcycles, so I know him fairly well from my, my time there. Uh, he has a kind of a side project doing uh, a, a, an electric race bike um, called the Light Fighter. Wow. And, yeah, and he's doing like a, like a, a V2, uh, a version 2 of, of that a generation. Um, that sounds so that. cool. And so I said to him, oh, yeah, maybe you want me to do bodywork for you too. And he was like, yeah, that would be cool. So I was like, <laughs> then I suddenly had two projects, two, but two really cool projects. Yeah, so yeah. These are two projects that I consider, like, I don't know if, if you or, or, or the viewers are familiar with John Britton, who was this uh, uh, New Zealand engineer who developed this, the V1000 race bike. But, and he basically, you know, he's a guy who built it in his shed and it's just way better than everything else. It just wow. came out and whooped the, all the Ducatis and stuff. And, and I, you know, I was considering these guys who were doing these two bikes, like real, like, 
uh, pioneers of, of you know, certainly Brian in the electric and, and, and what Chris is doing with his, um, with his um, petrol gas bike. But uh, yeah, I mean, amazing stuff what they're doing. And so I just, I just always love to be involved in cool projects, yeah. uh, cool motorcycle projects. What so, an opportunity. I mean, what an opportunity amazing, to be yeah, involved yeah. In, in some projects like that. Um, I mean, talk about cutting edge in engineering and in design and ideation and, you know, kind of mm. both, both parts of the, of the, you know, the motorcycle creation process. It's, um, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, and, and then, you know, further to that, so further to picking up these projects, um, I actually convinced uh, a good friend of mine, Fabian Rugenal of, um, Redster Design. So he's a, he's a guy who I used to work with, or I have worked with. Um, at Hero Motorcycles, and he's he's now left there, but um, he still remains a good friend. And so I said to him, oh, you know, do you want to uh, do you want to maybe help me out with uh, one or both of these projects?" And so we've been working together on Brian's Light Fighter project, and it's just been an incredible learning experience for both of us to, to see how this tool uh, just yeah what's possible and how we can how we can make this fit into our uh, or actually. It, it, create an entirely new workflow, I would mm. say, um, because, you know, this is replacing, like, what used to be a, like, the, I would say the poly modeling phase. So before clay modeling, you would go from, to get from a designer's sketch to get to, um, to the milling data, where you would mill a clay model, you know, you'd, normally you would go through a poly modeling phase and you'd use, like, Maya or Modo mm. or, or tool like this. Right? Wow. And, but you, you know, it's really very much a guy sitting with another guy and him developing it on a flat monitor. Wow. And so each of those, each of those things actually has a sort of a, a resistance to it, to, to success. And we've, we've found that with Gravity Sketch, we can, like, we, we're both there looking at the model in full scale uh, in front of us. So you don't have to, you don't have the limitation of a flat monitor and we can both look at whichever part of the bike we want from our from whichever perspective as you want as you move your head left and right it's as if looking at a real model you know you can track lines and stuff with your eye and you don't have to be um held hostage by whatever the model has got on the screen right all the time um and you know put, he wants to change something he just quickly put a you know put a point line in tune those points on the line uh, and then I can I can work, rework the surfaces to those lines. Um, yeah, what else? I mean, the fact that we can work remotely. So, so Fabian's mm. in the UK, I'm in Germany, and you know, okay, invariably we end up working together in the middle of the night, and it's you know, time is disappearing in this <laughs> thing. Uh, it's it's phenomenal just because the immersion in it. There's no distraction. Right. Like, I mean, like, on on every level. This is it's just, uh, just better. It's uh, well. It's I want to know. Does that mean? Does this all mean that um, you've done away with clay? I mean, do you still try and use clay in your work? Well, I wouldn't or? say that. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Okay. But I do say yet. Okay. Um, and this is where this is where I would. <sighs> Clay modelers will be calling me a philistine and God knows whatever <laughs> other four letter words probably. But I do think that this is actually, this will, repl so a lot of what we did in clay, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly labor intensive and long process. Mm. And you can, so you can be spending the first two thirds of the model being trying different ideas, trying to find solutions for, for, for various problems. And actually, that two thirds of the time now we can do that in Gravity Sketch. I see. In an absolute fraction of the time, um, and and so yeah, I I am working on projects where we are working in Gravity Sketch and then milling out the clay. And I have now seen the um, you know the yes, Gravity Sketch is good for some things, clay is good for some things. I see. I and see. Clay is great for the ref then the the refinement of mm. whatever we've done in Gravity Sketch. So that 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 pure surface refinement, which is you know, it's, it's hard to do in Gravity Sketch with yeah. it being a like a poly modeling tool. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So so that's what we use the clay for. But 
it does cut the clay down that clay time down quite a lot and yeah. it's you know i don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that in a couple of years more development uh of, of these tools in vr that depending on the project you could do away with clay altogether and i like you know i'm hesitant to say that and it, it's a strong statement <laughs> so many people will disagree with me. I have absolutely no doubt. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can recommend is say, go and use it. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. For three hundred dollars or three hundred, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you can go and buy. And a gravity sketch is, is now free, by the gravity way. Gravity sketch is now free. Well done, guys. Um, and you can try it, and you can see the power of it. And you know, if you'd have asked me in January, like just in January, would it get rid of play? I would have said no. And now, as I become more and more familiar with it, I can see, yeah, wow. it, 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 there could, there, there could, there, there's certainly going to be projects. I mean, there are projects going on now where they go straight into digital. Um, like, you know, I know that like the, the Damon motorcycles, um, I, I forget what the model name is called, but I believe that was done directly in SolidWorks, I think, which wow. is, you know, so, but some companies just don't have the budgets to justify clay. Um, and so, yeah, I can imagine there will be quite a lot of projects that are going straight from um, Gravity Sketch and into surface refinement in Alias. So in the clay process, if you were using clay with Gravity Sketch, does that mean, I mean, you kind of, I think you kind of said it, but I just wanted to get a little bit more detail on it because I was curious of you do the model in Gravity Sketch and you mill that and then you continue working in clay after that yeah. initial milling process yeah i mean there are you know there there's probably multiple as, as, ways of doing it but as wonderful as gravity sketch is there are some things that um until you sit on the bike because a motorcycle is such a dynamic yeah thing yeah. you know you're really it's about it's about the rider and the motorcycle yeah. and so if the right if the if the motorcycle doesn't fit to the rider yeah not a good motorcycle right so Okay, there's this great mannequin feature in Gravity Sketch, and we can get a sense of it. You know? yeah. But like, I can tell you, for example, uh, on a project I'm working on, on an OEM project I'm working on now, we milled out the clay, and I kind of sat on it, and I'm you know 180 centimeters tall, so more or less like an average kind of height, and I and I could tell that okay, where my knee was touching was going to be a problem. There was a there was an edge. And um, you know the ang the angle wasn't right, and we mm. yeah it was hard. I guess now I've learned that I didn't. Mm. That was my first OEM project that we were going into clay with, and yeah. so I maybe could have seen that. And so these are all like things I, I'm I'm definitely still learning. I mean every day is a school day for me. So yeah, uh, I'm just um, so that was great for that. But then yeah, there were certain proportion things as well, um, which you know needed sorting out, but but not. Not in the same way that when, when I've done clay or other projects where you're moving things like 10, 15 mil, like really sketching in um, design themes and stuff. All those design themes had already been like, we, 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 we'd had the opportunity to try out so many different design themes in Gravity Sketch because it was so fast to try them. Yeah. We knew, we knew what worked and what didn't work. And, you know, and so we, you know, we picked a path that worked and, and we were happy with. And then it was really just that kind of fine refinement that, that needed to go on um, in the clay. Um, wow. So, That's know, just incredible. I, I, I'm, I'm blown away by just by um, just how useful you found it in your workflow. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I, I love hearing about it, though, because I, you know, it's it's. Um, you mean, I, I don't have experience you obviously in the in the clay modeling world and, and obviously all the experience that you've had in, in motorcycle design. So it's just it's just amazing to hear how much of a difference it's making um, and encouraging to know just I think there's probably still more um, areas of discovery to, of, of um, you know, finding out what, where Gravity Sketch can fit in, I think, in the process. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I want to it kind of moves into um, a question that I wanted to ask you, which was how you see VR changing the way we create and express our ideas just in general. Um, I mean, you know, what are your thoughts and opinions on just VR? I mean, I can't really speak for designers. Um, like I, I wouldn't say I work as a designer really mm. anymore. Although, mm. 
what I do as a modeler definitely blurs the lines a little bit this way to design and a little bit this way to engineering because yeah. I kind of have to straddle that that development phase. Um, but I can, yeah, I can really only speak for, for, for modelers and it's, it's absolutely just transforming for me. Like, and, and I'm really just, I just really want to just get the word out to anybody who, who, who doesn't believe to try it. It's, it's, yeah, it's so useful. Um, and yeah, it's just making things a lot faster and, you know, just being able to see it in, in real, you know, stand next to it, effectively stand over the bike, sit on it. It's, it, it's absolutely, a, it's, it's an experience that you will, you'll have and you just go, okay, I get it. You may not be able to get it until you put that headset on. Yeah. It's, that's definitely a common thing that we've seen, uh, you know, talking in just on, on customer calls and just, and when we're just talking to someone that maybe hasn't tried it yet, um, it's very much consistent thing that you just have to try it or else you just don't know what the experience it's, even it's is. It's like if you were trying to explain to someone what the world is like by just showing them a video of the world. Right. Right. No, no. The experience of seeing through your eyes is, a, is, is, you know, it's 10,000% different to right. what you see on the screen. Right. So, um, it just needs to be experienced to understand it. And then, yeah. and then I think it's very quick to understand it. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I, I've mentioned this several times on, on interviews um, that I've done, but the first time I tried gravity sketch at school, um, there was a st senior student using it. I plopped the headset on and, um, immediate, I mean, he, he said, now click your trigger, draw a stroke immediately i was like this is going to change everything um i didn't even have to do anything more than that um but i wanted to ask you as well uh, along the lines of working in vr and you know sort of embarking on this on this new tool this sort of new way of working um how has designing and collaborating in vr affected your work in the clients you work with i know you kind of alluded to some of that but i wanted to hear a little bit more about um, how collaboration is, has, has fit into your, your workflow as well. Um, I guess it may, well, it hasn't really affected like in terms of like the clients I'm working with, I'm actually still working with the same clients, but it's, um, you know, this is obviously we're in a unique time with coronavirus and stuff and, and actually having this ability to work remotely. It, it's, I mean, you can imagine like it suddenly suddenly is we're working remotely actually more effectively than we would be if we were together working on a clay. I know that seems like strange, but it's just yeah. so lucky that, that, that we, that I have this tool. So I've been able to carry on, um, working like, I mean, actually luckily all last year I was working on clay anyway, even during the lockdown, but now I'm, I'm working on projects, um, in VR and, but I think it will, hopefully it will open up, different um different avenues for like I, like i said to you some projects don't have the budget for clay um and so therefore if you don't have a budget for clay no one's you know you're not going to phone me but suddenly if you've got a sketch and an idea and you you want to make something then okay suddenly we can do it in vr and actually if you know if, if you're not worried that the last 5% is absolutely perfect, um, which like, you know, say it was aftermarket um, accessories or something like that, where, you know, I don't think they have quite the same um, uh, level of design interest that, that um, OEMs have. Yeah. Then, yeah, then it suddenly it means that like all of that market is open to me. Um, so yeah, do get in touch if you, <laughs> if you have a project. I'd be delighted to hear from you. Um, yeah, well, we're um, we're we're definitely going to put some links um, to Nick's work in our description, as well as um, you've you've put out a video recently um, sharing a collaboration session uh, in Gravity Sketch, um, and I think you you um, you were also telling me earlier that you're working on another video as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that's going to be? And yeah, I'm just doing it like because I want to get the word out on this and what I'm doing, um, because I think it is so novel and powerful. Um, yeah, I wanted to get the, the word out by by means of video, just to show what we're doing. And yeah, I'm just doing a, light, a series of videos of the work I've been doing with Fabian uh, on the Light Fighter. And 
you know, we have the best, funniest time. Obviously, I cut the funniest stuff out of the video. Uh, but you can believe me, you know, two grown men with the ability to, to draw stuff in midair. It's like we just we're constantly messing around. I mean, probably I'll put, I'll put some of that stuff in the next few videos. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, we have a great time. But you know, we're really working. But I think anybody who works in motorcycles loves their job. And, and yeah, of course. Absolutely. I mean, come on. And I, you know, I, I've always loved being a clay model. I absolutely yeah. adore working in clay, you know, that's how I've been doing it for 20 years and still not lost the buzz for it. But I think as much as doing that, what I really enjoyed was doing the, um, like the conceptualizing stuff. And, and now, uh, I mean, that is the funnest part of any clay project is that early on concept, um, you're trying out concepts. And now I'm just doing that all the time in, in gravity sketch. And so it's just like, Never, never a dull moment. I'm super happy all the time. Something I would, I would assume probably you would say as well. Uh, for me, I mean, I, I feel like it's given the put the fun back in in, in modeling. Um, I mean, I'm sure you enjoyed the clay modeling process, but um, yeah. well, it was yeah, yeah, the fun never left. But right, uh, it was transitioning. I guess yeah. for me, I'm coming from like SolidWorks and Alias and stuff like that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, definitely, it's it's injecting fun into your <laughs> workflow. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, just I just find that super fascinating, and um, we'll of course link to those videos as well in the in the description so people can check that out. Um, mm -hmm. We're also overlaying some video uh, over the, over the this conversation too, so people can see a little bit of a taste of it. Um, but uh, I want to move a little bit more into this gra uh, gravity sketch tool and 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 how you've been using it, um, and just learn a little bit more about things that you've enjoyed, things you would prefer to have. This is something we've been asking um, uh, a lot of our uh, guests because we, we're always open for feedback. Um, and for anyone, anyone listening, please send us feedback over our direct messages because um, we really are trying to make this a tool for uh, modelers, creators, designers, artists. Um, I mean, we're not really interested in just adding features that um, aren't backed by uh, a direct need of some kind. So. Um, so please send feedback. It's definitely welcome. But what I want to ask you, Nick, is just what are some of the tools that have been your favorite in using your process, uh, in your workflow um, that have been great, as well as I'm sure you've come across some things where you're like, oh, I wish I had that or I wish I could do this. Um, are there, is there anything like that that you have? I mean, it, yeah, there's, there's definitely there's definitely tools to be added for sure. Like, I mean, it, it's it, what it can do already is fantastic and as you can imagine most of what i'm doing is using the sub b um surfacing tools um so i would say i'm very proficient with those some of the other tools that are there like the revolve and uh, yeah just just some of, you know some of the primitive manipulation actually i'm probably not very good at because i don't really use i haven't had the opportunity to use them mm. um but yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, I have, I have some, I, I certainly have some ideas about the tools that I want you to add. And actually, I've got to talk to your colleagues um, in a couple of weeks, actually, you know, we're going to have a full kind of uh, conversation about that. But there, it's just about the, like, things we can do to add better fidelity to the surfaces, um, different ways of, like, adding radiuses, radii, sorry. Yeah. Um, and, like, Things like cross section tool would be really nice. We had a slide a cross section through. Um, Spotify support would be great if you could have like music in the co create studio. Like, I mean, I have music yeah. um, and I, I, I can play it without the other person hearing it, but I don't know. It feels like, uh, you know, if you start humming along or something. Absolutely. Or, or whatever. Some kind of, maybe like a Spotify integration or, or Absolutely. iTunes integration Integr would yeah. be cool. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that would definitely be cool. Like a little jukebox in the corner or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, th I mean, there's there's loads of like tools, like the, the for me as a, as a clay modeler, the way I've worked in clay, it would be really nice to be able to have some of those tools, um, like to, to add, just to add better fidelity to the surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can't even, I can't even think what, oh, rendering, uh, rendering was another thing. Mm. If, 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 
we had the ability to to do some i don't know if you can plug in um like unreal engine or something into this mm. and then be able to to actually export properly rendered um shots from it that would be amazing um but yeah i'm, I'm really at the beginning of my journey with this like i, I don't yeah. pretend to be an expert in everything to do with this or even in fact digital itself I, I'm, I'm complete new to the digital world uh you know other than like scanning you know a bit of manipulation in alias or whatever it hasn't really been my thing i haven't really, yeah but so but now I, now i'm really seeing this as the as the path forwards um well, I just think that's so my, so awesome and, and, and a real, um, I mean, I just think it's a real inspiration that, you know, even someone with not a lot of digital background and, and doesn't really, isn't really interested in, you know, being some digital modeler, but this has touched your, your workflow and your, and your hand in such a way that it, you've been able to use it, um, super effectively and, and, and you see it just as an extension of yourself, not as a tool yeah. that you have to like, you know, somehow absorb and, and speak the language. Yeah, I mean, the skills, are, the skills that you learn as a, as a physical modeler are directly trans transferable hmm. into this environment. You know, it's not, wow. like, it's not like when Photoshop came, came along, people had to relearn to draw. They already knew how to draw on paper, they just then did it on a Cintiq. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's really that that if you're already able capable of modeling the you know the, the learning curve you just need to you just need to learn what button does what and then you can um kind of take your knowledge and reapply it into a digital environment awesome well i, I want to give you the chance one more time uh nick i know you i know you in in the previous sort of earlier on in the conversation you talked about some things that you're you're working on but um, is there anything that you want people to specifically follow you that you're, you're going to be coming out with uh, soon? I mean, obviously, you're coming out with more videos. Um, any other projects that you're going to be sharing soon that you want people to keep an eye out for? Well, well, I, well I first, first I have to finish the first four projects I'm working on now. Um, and then um, what I'm seriously thinking about doing, because I'm so um, just moved by this entire thing, is to actually see how how i could better bring this to other people um who are working in in automotive companies um preferably motorcycle companies but mm -hmm. i know you know car companies also use clay um and actually so i'm looking at setting up so i'm talking already to some of your colleagues um in london about setting up uh, a gravity sketch excuse me a gravity sketch training program um that really focuses on um how to bring people who are physical modelers into digital modeling so like if anyone's interested in that for their organization i'd love to hear from you you know there's nothing ready to go right now um but just would be really interesting to hear if people are up for that kind of a thing the yeah. the, the the learning curve is not too steep uh if you're already modeling but you know there is a you know there is a hurdle i understand for companies to actually get hold of the hardware you know get their modelers using this and stuff. And so I just want to be there to try and um, help overcome that hurdle and be, yeah, and just get everyone who's currently able to model physically into being able to model in, in virtual reality. Wow, that's super exciting. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, it could be, it could be. Yeah, yeah. I, hope so. <laughs> I think that's super awesome. And well, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have your information. So if anybody's watching and wants to reach out, um, they know where to find you. So, um, mm. Well, I just want to thank you, Nick, so much. And I do have just one final question. And this is something we've been asking um, a lot of our guests. And, um, you know, especially with someone like with experience like yourself, I, I'm really interested to know what what sort of um, advice would you give to any? Um, and I know you said you're not really a designer. You're more like a, a modeler and um, work a lot with engineers. But for all designers and artists, engineers, modelers that may be watching, what advice would you give them that you've learned from your from your career and your life thus thus far? It's a big question. That's a big um, one. <laughs> I, have, yeah. um, I think. Well, I mean, I, yeah, like you say, I can't really talk. I don't think I'm qualified to talk to designers so much as I am to <laughs> models. Um, but I mean, certainly, just just for the sake of this, I would just say that um, just 
go out and try it. Get, like, you must know someone, even if you don't go and buy it yourself, someone who's got a headset, uh, go and try it. it. I mean, I think that it will have, a. I think the, the way this will change the industry is going to have a big impact on your career if you're a modeler. So, you know, you're, you're better off to get out in front of it and, and be part of it rather than trying to play catch up later. Um, and that's, I mean, this was, this was basically my motivation to, to try this was because I, I could see uh, what it was going to do. And so now I want to get out in front of it. Awesome. Well, I thank you so much, Nick, for your time. And uh, thank you, everyone that's been watching. Um, we'll uh, have links to all of your, all of your uh, socials in the description, as well as the videos that you've been releasing so people can go and continue following the work that you do. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good one, everyone.